So I'm going to go over a couple of things that everybody needs to know. Today we're going to go over the exercises for Chapter 5, the written and the performance exercises. And we will continue in Chapter 4 in the textbook. And I'm going to mention a few other things. First of all, oh, hang on, I have to find another piece of paper here. I wrote originally that we're going to do how to transcribe Mandarin and IPA today, but we're too busy today and there's a lot of stuff going on. So we'll do that on Wednesday. So for Wednesday, and by the way, to remind you again, all of this stuff is on the syllabus page for the class. Some of you didn't find out until like a week ago or two weeks ago that we even have a syllabus page with the assignments written on it. It's only up to date usually to the current week. That means if it's Monday, then it'll be up to date for Monday and Wednesday. The stuff after it is not up to date. Don't look at that. But for the week that we are currently in, it will usually be up to date. So remember that. It's page one of Phonetics One on the website. Uh, I asked you to bring a handout, and that's pages three and four of the piece by Li Wenzhao Laoshi on phonetic detail of Mandarin, Chinese Mandarin, okay, or Mandarin Chinese. So make sure you print out those two pages, 那两页一定要印出来,然后带来上课, because we're going to work on those on Wednesday. We're going to learn how to, it'll be one style, it's not the only style. Remember that when we're doing transcription, we're always talking about choices. We make certain choices for a certain purpose, if you remember that from the textbook. Sometimes we want a more broad transcription, sometimes we want more phonetic detail. For Mandarin, we're going to compromise. We're going to put some phonetic detail in there, that I personally think is important, but overall it's a relatively broad transcription. That's what we're going to do starting on Wednesday. Make sure you have that handout so you have a guide helping you to know what symbols to use for, uh, for transcribing Mandarin. Uh, in addition, I told you in class very recently that you needed to write an evaluation for this class and the details are now on the website. Can you see this here, where it says end of semester evaluation? This is on the syllabus page. You, in the part one, evaluate the class, textbook teacher TA syllabus, homework assignments, the filming. Tell us what was most and least useful in the class, what things could be improved, and how they could be improved. Everything about the class is part one. Part two, evaluate yourself. Did you come? Did you come on time? Did you hand in your homework? Did you? learn a lot from the class, how much effort did you put into the class, etc. You evaluate yourself. Part three, your plan for continuing to learn English on your own and also to continue in phonetics and linguistics. How are you going to do that? Now, some of you are not particularly interested in linguistics, so you'll say, well, I'm really not that crazy about linguistics, but I'm going to work hard on translation. I'm very interested in translation. Or I'm very interested in teaching foreigners Chinese or in teaching English, or whatever it is, whatever your own situation is, your plan for improving on your own, because school is not enough, classes are not enough. They only give you some ideas of things to work on maybe you hadn't, that maybe you hadn't thought of before. So part three, how are you going to continue improving your English and progressing in your studies, particularly phonetics and linguistics, but if that's not your thing, whatever it is that you're interested in. Part four, remember to give a new uh, a new essay on how you feel about the, the recording that you made at the beginning of the semester. You already wrote one essay at the time. Now after a lot of training, your ears should be much more sensitive and you've changed some habits from before. Listen to it again. You may find some surprises and you think, wow, I used to do that, but now I do it this way and I sound much better. So again, write your reactions to, your feedback on the recording you made at the beginning of the semester. Part two is a summary of your class notes. You've taken a lot of class notes in this class and handed them in. So this is just a way of consolidating what you have learned in this class, what we have covered. So organize it into one file. And you probably have 
something that's repeated over and over again. You keep getting corrected on the same thing or something's mentioned in class more than once but it didn't really sink in the first time. So you can put them all into one category in one part of the summary. You can give a few examples but I don't need tons of detail. You don't have to put in every bit of detail because you have very long notes. I want them organized. Make it up, make it organized. Um, okay, so that's what you need to do for the evaluation. In addition, make sure that you also, you also evaluate each of your classes online for the university. I will get to see the results of those, but they don't give me enough detail. This is the part that helps me immediately. I get it from you, and I can use this to help me plan the class next semester and understand how you're doing this semester, how you have been doing. Okay, this is all clear? Yes? yes? I need feedback. Thank you, Stanley. How about the rest of you? Yes. Good, thank you. Next. Um, the Jennifer Jenkins video, uh, I put the link to that on Facebook and also here. You can see it right up in number seven. So if you haven't watched that, it's not long. It's very easy to understand and <clears throat> As I mentioned in class, I agree with her on many of the things she says, but we part ways at a certain point. Listen to the video so you have a clear explanation from her herself about her thinking on pronunciation teaching, how far somebody needs to go in learning pronunciation, how much the listener is expected to do when interacting with somebody whose, English, whose native language is not English. So I want you to listen to that carefully and objectively. Now, I have my own opinion. In both cases, it's opinion. But compare the two and then decide what you think. There may be questions about it in the final because this is a really key issue. She has sort of started a large movement of uh, the, this idea of lingua, English as a lingua franca. In other words, we simplify English or we adapt English to the needs of each group of learners depending on their own cultural experience and background. And to a certain extent, we have to do that, but I think we differ in how far we have to go in allowing people to make their own rules in English. Basically, I believe we should have a standard variety that we teach, and everybody should aim for that. And then, beyond that point, it's up to you, but you should aim for a standard variety. Okay? There's a new Shida article, and I mentioned it to you before, mentioning it again. It's on final S and final ED endings. Also on final S when it's not an ending, there's a very brief part on that. But basically, it's on the rules that we've already learned. You can see that here in, um, I'm sorry, I think, yeah, that's right. Number seven is the number in the series. You've already read six articles. This is article number seven in the series. So S and E, D, C, W, it's a manian. Everybody read that. It will mainly be review, but you need to read that and put it in your notes for next week. Put it in your notes, an assignment. Okay, in the We've already learned the things, but it's a good review. When, it's, when you're reading out loud, some of you still make mistakes on this, which means you haven't quite internalized the rules yet, some of you. So um, please read this carefully, take notes on it. I think that covers all of the little bits and pieces I want to mention. Okay, any questions? We're going to go to the exer exercises for chapter five. So get those ready, exercises for chapter five. And we're going to hand those in today. We usually didn't hand them in right away before because students usually like to keep them to help them prepare for the upcoming test. But we are not having a separate test on chapters four and five. That material will be included and covered in the final exam. So here we go. And we're on page 131 in your textbook. I have to juggle two textbooks because I have my answers in an old textbook, an old edition, because the uh, exercises are pretty much the same. And again, some of the numbers and letters may have been mixed up, but we posted a corrected version on Facebook, thanks to Amy Tsai, who's been helping us a lot. Um, so first of all, part A on page 131, it says, make up pairs of phrases or sentences that show how each of the following words can have two different stress patterns. 
I hope all of you understand how this works. Somebody asked me after class last Wednesday about how this works and they were quite surprised. The example is continental. Where is the stress? Which syllable? Again? The third syllable, continental, continental. So um, you could say uh, the atmosphere is very continental. I just want to think of a sentence that puts continental at the end. And here it says she's very continental. Uh, but if we put a noun after it, what happens here? Breakfast is a compound. And the stress is at the beginning like a typical compound. And continental, the stress in this citation form is not at the end. So it's not as though the two, the two stresses crash into each other directly. It's not continental. That sounds French. OK, continental. It's not like that. But continental, continental, it's in the middle of this. It's the, what do we call that syllable? We mentioned in class before. It's the penultimate syllable. Anti-penultimate, right. So final syllable, penultimate syllable, anti-penultimate. After anti-penultimate, we start counting from the, from the start of the word rather than the end. Because we're already So here it's the penultimate syllable. It's quite close to the end. And that last syllable is just a, an unstressed sue. It's an adjective ending. So it's quite close to the stress in breakfast. So instead of saying, as in the sentence, she's very continental, we say it's a continental breakfast. And this reflects what Latifoget says in this chapter, that do we have such thing as primary and secondary stress in a word, according to Latifoget? No? What do we have? Either stressed or not stressed, one syllable sounds more prominent because it is the. Is everybody following me? If you don't, then rethink it so it's clear in your head. This is worth getting clear in your head. So, continental. How many stresses do we have? Continental. We have two, right? We usually ignore the secondary stress. It sort of happens naturally if you are reading English with the correct rhythm. So it's not continental, it's continental. We have a kind of alternating of stresses in long words. In general, we have an alternating of stresses, not necessarily every other one. Maybe it's stress, unstressed, stre unstressed. So it could be three, three syllables and two of them are unstressed. There are many patterns, but the point is, we don't have two stresses right next to each other or very close to each other. In a long word, we usually have more than one actual stress. We only care about the primary one. That's the one we need to pay attention to. However, there are other stresses. And according to Latifoga, they have equal status. Either it's stressed or not stressed. The reason it is the primary stress is because What makes it the primary stress? Continental. Why is nen so much higher than ka? Because it carries the tonic stress. We got it. Very good. Tonic stress or tonic accent. If we say tonic accent, it reminds us that it's at the sentence level. It's not at the word level. So because it's at the end of a phrase, as it would be, for example, in a citation form, it's going to be much higher because that's the way tonic accent or tonic stress works. Continental. It's higher because it is a tonic stress. But con also has a stress, which means if two stresses get too close together and we want to avoid that, we can push the stress back more towards the beginning of the word. And do we have another stress at the beginning of the word that we can use for that? What is it? Continental. Nental is the breakfast. Continental breakfast. Because those two stresses are too close together. Continental breakfast. Because in English we like. So 
Continental breakfast. 那个 nent 太靠近 breakfast 的 break. So is there another stress towards the beginning of the word to where we can move that stress on nent to? 本来是 nent 有主要的走音，可是太靠近 break， 我们要把它那个推到哪里去？ Con. That's right. So instead of saying continental breakfast, we say continental breakfast. In that way, those two stresses are farther apart, and English speakers like that much better. We just don't like stresses to be so close together. So, for those of you who weren't really clear what was going on in this exercise, does that make it clear now? Continue, ma. All right, because one of you asked me after class last time. It occurred to me that a lot of you may not understand it because we mentioned it very briefly in class, but maybe not everybody got it really clearly. So this exercise is designed to help you understand better how this works.、Um, so,、uh, whose turn? Okay. Do we have the camera ready? Yes. Okay. What's your example here?、Uh, the first one, afternoon. She usually sleeps in the afternoon. That's good. She usually sleeps in the afternoon, and in the after in the afternoon. How is it? So he's in a. Uh, the first. In the first example, it's we.、Uh, she usually sleeps in the afternoon. The yeah, but the way you're saying it, where is the main stress? A yeah, a noon. I I thought you I heard you say it was on aft afternoon, and that's a common Taiwan English mistake because. In many speech contests that I've judged, the first sentence already 已经扣分了 Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I hear that many, many, many times in speech contests. Or I have heard, I should say. So, good afternoon should be good afternoon. And I don't know if it's because you're taught that the main stress is on aft, but it's not on aft. It's on noon. Afternoon. Afternoon. Everybody, good afternoon. Not after. There's an R there, by the way. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Right, and don't say noon. Some of you are saying noon. It's noon, noon. The noon, the noon, noon, noon. Try it again. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. That's better. So the original stress in the citation form is on noon, and put that in your notes if you had it wrong before. Because in Taiwan, I hear that mispronounced very, very commonly. So let's do this one one more time. Start again. She usually sleeps in the afternoon. In the afternoon, and it's not noon, by the way, though this sometimes happens even happens even with native speakers. Because noon and noon 已经不分了，所以有时候我们就随便 noon 跟 noon 都会听到 noon 是完全错 ，but you you hear it quite often now, and a lot of native speakers are not even aware of it. So afternoon, she usually sleeps in the afternoon, and. And、um, we're having afternoon tea. We're having afternoon tea, and that's the most familiar. I think "s" that people in Taiwan will think of because it's really popular now, right? Okay, we're having afternoon tea. We don't say afternoon tea. That's very awkward. We're having afternoon tea. You have to put a pause there to make it work at all. And even with a pause, it sounds very odd. We don't say it that way. It's afternoon tea. Good afternoon. Afternoon tea. 可以吗？都清楚吗 ？That's a very good example. Let's go on. Next one. And why don't you take one more example so we don't have to keep changing so often? Next one, artificial. Okay,、uh, where's the stress? Be careful. Artificial. Mm-hmm. It's usually artificial. For example, in this sentence, it is. And the stress is on which syllable? F. D. D. G. G. D. S. N. G. D. S. N. G. G. Okay. But in artificial snow, it's on the first. All right. So artificial. That looks so artificial. 看起来真的是好假啊，好像是人造的那种东西。But artificial snow. 就是人造雪 It looks so artificial. Artificial. Artificial snow. Good. All right. Let's change people now. Diplomatic.、Mm-hmm. Um, the first. Stress is on. Matt.、Mm-hmm. Um, China is now eagerly establishing diplomatic relations. Oh, we need one in the. Oh, I see. You're doing that second. I'd like to do the citation form first. Let's switch it around. Do the citation form first. Okay. Oh. Um, this problem is diplomatic. It's stylistically, it's a little funny, but it's okay.、Um, he's very diplomatic, 就可以了。那个人非常的外交，很圆滑
，就是口才很好，他很很会很会讲话，不会得罪人。So he's very diplomatic, and in a in a phrase, what would it be? Uh, Ch China is now eagerly establishing diplomatic relations with other countries. Good, and from diplomatic, stress on the third syllable, the switch, the, sorry, the stress has shifted to, right, diplomatic relations, diplomatic relations. You can still hear a bit of a stress on the mat, but di now has taken over the main stress in this phrase, in this phrase. so diplomatic relations, diplomatic relations. And the next one as well, please. Um, absent-minded. Absent, you've got T. Absent-minded. Absent-minded. Good, okay. Uh, she is absent-minded. Ab That's fine. A simple sentence will do to get the citation form. She's very absent-minded. Absent. You can still hear the other stress on ab. Absent-minded. She's very absent-minded. 她很健忘。她就是常常会 出神分心, she forgets, she forgets her umbrella, her pen, she's absent mind because she's thinking about something else. And in a phrase? He's an absent-minded person. Okay, that's very good. He's an absent-minded person, absent-minded person. And the really common cliche using absent-minded in English is, anybody know? There's a movie with this title. This gets a bit personal here. Absent-minded professor. Absent-minded professor. Now you expect professors to have pretty good minds, except because they're always thinking deeply about something they're interested in, what often happens to them, 就生活上会怎样扣着扣错了对不对那袜子那个两只就是不是一对的对不对就乱七八糟生活上细节他不注意 because they're thinking about something else. That's an absent-minded professor. And same person next one as well. The boy can and first read the item. New New York. Huh? New York. <laughs> New York. There. And what's your R? New York. Okay, I know that you're yeah, you're working with you're concentrating on British English. And in British English it'd be New York. New York. Um New York, because uh, why do we stress the York? Very simple reason. Is this a compound? No, because it's just an adjective, right? Even though it's the name of a city and a state, it's still not a compound. It's just an adjective. And I went to a performance on Saturday of, the, of A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens, and one of the actors was Taiwanese. And who's the little boy in A Christmas Carol who is very sick? You guys know A Christmas Carol, don't you? What's his name? A little, a little, because it's a Tiny Tim, that's right. And do we say Tiny Tim or Tiny Tim? Is it a compound or not? No, so how do we say it? Tiny Tim, that's right. But the actress kept saying Tiny Tim. Oh, how is Tiny Tim? And you know, as a teacher, teaching this stuff, it drove me crazy. <laughs> it's not a compound. <laughs> yes, and I, I talked to one of the other actors in the, in the performance, and they said, yes, they didn't have enough time to give this person coaching. Her English is not bad, but as I said in the article, this is in your not just in Taiwan. In many countries, they don't know this at all. So, Tiny Tim, it's not a compound. Sometimes you put compound stress on something that is not a compound. But New York, York has the, um, the tonic stress. So your examples? Uh, the boy came from New York. The boy came from New York. I like comes from. He's still here. The boy comes from New York. And? Uh, I'll come back in New, in New York mini, minutes. I'll come back, Dreamer. I'll come back yes. in New York minutes. Everybody, please add this to your notes. This is a but it's very important. I think we've mentioned it, but I'm not sure. And I haven't put it in the Shuda articles yet. You're nodding. Amy, what are we talking about? It's in the notes that you've got? Good for you. That's okay. What is this particular um, 
kind of mistake or what kind of a structure do we have here? Come back is 什么样的一个一个形式 Phrasal verb, right? This is a phrasal verb, and which part is stressed? Both are stressed. All right, don't mix that up. Some people think the first one is not stressed, but they are both stressed. But back sounds more prominent because it carries the tonic stress. You see how important tonic stress or tonic accent is. There are many shell the tonic stresses often in a sentence. It works like a, a hierarchy, just like those trees that you drew in syntax class. So, 不同层次就是层次最高的是整个句子讲完了 The last. Stress syllable in the whole sentence is the main tonic stress. 可是句中还会有很多小的 tonic stress. 复合词就会有 tonic stress. And in this case, um, to come back, 它两个都有重音 And phrasal verb 上面的第二个成分那个虚词的部分是有 tonic stress. So it sounds it sounds higher, more prominent. So one more time. Uh, I'll come back in New York minute. Uh, you're missing an article. Otherwise, it's a nice sentence. In the、oh. New York minute. Thank you. You got it. I'll come back. I'd like be back. By the way, be back. Good call. I'll be back in a New York minute. I'll be back in a New York. 两个都有重音 Minute. Okay. Remember, 时空跟组织放在名词的前面，两个都保留原来的重音 Like a family meeting, a world leader. Monday evening, 等等，只要前面是时空组织，后面的重音会保留。So this is an example of that New York minute. What's a New York minute, Jerome? Uh, it's a very short period of time. It's a 非常非常短的时间 a New York minute, because the people in New York is no, are known as being very very busy in a hurry, and that's true of Taipei people as well. And that's why so many people. One of the reasons why. So many people think Taipei feels a lot like New York, and it's really true. Yeah, Taipei is in the New York the way though, in many good ways and many neither good nor bad ways. They're just quite similar. So a New York minute. Let's go on part B. We're going to go through these fairly quickly. I think I will just go through these with you because they're not that big of a deal, and some of these pronunciations are not really common. Some I never heard before I did these articles more than ten years ago. So part B is. About a hundred years ago, the following words had stress as shown. Some of them still do for some people, but many of them, in Peter Latifoged's speech, all of them are stressed differently nowadays. Transcribe these words and show the stress on each of them in your own speech. Then state a general rule describing this tendency for the position of the stress to change to a particular syllable. I'm going to go through the examples, and we'll stay focused on Jerome, and you can answer the question at the end. The first one is 那个臭咸鱼提鱼。那个叫中文叫提鱼 ，That's the stuff they put on pizzas and spaghetti if you like it. And it used to be called anchovy, and I think I did hear that when I was younger sometimes anchovy. But now we say anchovy. Very good. The next one, abdomen. I believe I also did hear when I was younger, but not even then, not that commonly. It sounded like a mispronunciation. Go ahead. Abdomen. That's right. Ab. Abdomen, abdomen. 其实两个说就可以 Abdomen 跟 abdomen 都可以都通 The stress is now on the first syllable. The next one, some people still say applicable. This is not applicable to the problem we're talking about. 还蛮蛮多的 But I don't really like it, and that's not the way I say it.、Uh, what's the other pronunciation? Applicable. Applicable. And please learn that one. It sounds more educated to my ears. So maybe other people feel similarly. Applicable. The next one. The next one in British English is still usually pronounced controversy, controversy in British, and that's what I hear on the BBC. It's what I hear from my teacher, controversy, and in American we say controversy. No, controversy because Jerome is working on British English, so that's probably what you're used to. Controversy in American, controversy, controversy in British, controversy in American. And the next one, nomenclature. Nomenclature. This is a 层次很高的字，蛮有学问的字。It just means a system for giving things names. 就是给予东西名称的一个整个系统叫 nomenclature. Nomenclature. But now we say nomenclature. Nomenclature. The next one used to be trachea, but I did not hear that when I was young. I never heard that until 
I think when I saw this textbook exercise. So trachea, we say? Trachea, good. Etiquette, I never heard also. Even though it's a French word and fairly recent, a fairly recent import, somewhat recent I'm assuming. And we stress French words in English, in American English, usually on which syllable? On the final syllable, massage, garage, plateau, etc. We tend to stress French imports, French loanwords in American English on the final syllable. But if it's a very old French loan, then we don't. For example, market, I believe, came from French, but that's a very old word. And in British English, it's different because they don't say plateau, they say plateau. They don't say massage, they say massage. So in British English, they don't follow this rule of stress on the final syllable. They usually stress it toward the beginning in British. So here we have etiquette. I never heard that. I say etiquette. Etiquette. Okay, not etiquette either. It's a schwa. Etiquette. Good. The second one, replica, I never heard. We say replica, replica. right. The next one. Vagari, I never heard. We say? Vagary, Vagary means something that uh, is, trans, is transient. 就是一下子有,一下子幻灭的东西 is a vagary. 一下子这样,可是一下子又不在,又不那样子. Blasphemous, I heard when I was young. Because I went to a Christian school, we use that word a lot actually. Blasphemous, but we say now? Blasphemous, blasphemous. The next two. Um, a cumin, I still hear this, a cumin is possible. It's, again, it's a very high level word. We do use it, but now we say acumen. And it's commonly used in the phrase business acumen. Business acumen. He has business acumen. That's a very useful phrase. And Jerome, what's the rule that you found? Do you have a rule? It's pretty easy to generalize because what did we do in all cases? Ex well, mostly, pretty much all cases. Mo most words that have uh, the stress in the second syllable originally, uh, the stress changed to the first syllable. The first syllable. The first syllable. Right. And I found that all these words are uh, all these words oh, all have oh, yeah. all have mm -hmm. three syllables. Uh, syllables. Uh -huh. Syllables, uh -huh. and they just move from the second to the first. So is it uh, the one of the condition is those words which have three syllables? Um, how about the fifth word? How about the fifth word? I have. Fourth. Right. Okay. In general, you're right. All the rest do have three syllables. One and three. Okay, three or more. That's right. In these particular words that they chose, these are words where a shift has occurred. It doesn't mean that all three syllable words experience this kind of shift. But in these particular words that they chose for this, um, for this exercise, the stress for all of them is on the first syllable. Yeah. I don't know if that answered your question, but you're trying to generalize it? Right. They are all three syllables and one is four. So three syllables or more. But it's a specially selected list of words. So don't try to generalize it to all three syllable words. That's all I'm warning you of. Okay? Any other comments or questions? Let's continue. Next reader, please. This one is very basic to English of a certain class of words. Which class of words is it that experiences these kinds of stress shifts, shifts in stress? We mentioned it in class before. Is it all English words that do this, or what particular kinds of English words? Can you answer that question? Yeah. Go ahead. No, I want you to answer the question first. Sorry. OK, yeah, I know you're busy there. So we have a specific class of words in which the stress often switches from one syllable to another syllable depending on what part of speech it is. So it will have, for example, photograph for the noun form, photography for the abstract noun form, 这是一个抽象名词, photography, 
And then we find the stress goes even further right for the adjective form, photographic. A photographic memory. But this, is, this picture looks photographic, you could say maybe. So photograph, photography, photographic. They all have the same root, right? They all have the same stem, photograph. But we see the stress moving when it becomes a different part of speech. But what class of words is this mainly true of? Mainly which class of words in English is this true of? This kind of shift in stress from one part of speech to another, or from one meaning to another, one type of word to another. Anybody? What class of words? From French, sometimes from French, if it's a recent French loan, we will remember that the stress is usually on the final syllable. But these are not necessarily through French. They go back to the source, namely Greek and Latin. Yeah. French is a Romance language. That means it descended directly from Latin. And Greek is, uh, is, uh, forms another branch of the Indo-European family. Greek is Hellenic. Rahona romance just a Latin and Latin whole day, the whole day the nation yuan. But words that are composed of Latin and Greek elements, so words from Latin and Greek, they typically will show this kind of, will exhibit this kind of stress in, I'm uh, sorry, shift in where the stress occurs when we go from one part of speech to another. So these are mainly Wai Lai Yu from which languages? Latin and Greek. We usually say Latin and Greek instead of Greek and Latin. Okay, Latin and Greek. The Romans copied a lot or borrowed a lot from the Greeks, but we just say Latin and Greek. So mainly, mainly words that are from Latin and Greek will have this kind of shift in stress. Germanic words usually don't. In Germanic words, first of all, the Anglo-Saxon vocabulary way back in early times, it's say around the year between 500 and the year um, 1100, was mainly monosyllabic. But when all of these foreign words came in, French words, and mainly French, that was in the 12th century, 11th century, then we started having a different type of word. And it was a word in which we experienced this kind of shift in stress, which syllable was stressed. Okay, so you don't find that with the native German vocabulary, Germanic vocabulary. Those will not usually be stressed. That's the tersa of Anglo Saxon vocabulary. Okay, that's all clear? Just so you know what's going on here. And go ahead, can you uh, give me some examples? Phoning, mm -hmm. phonology, mm -hmm. phonologic. Very phonological. Phonological. Is better, yes. OK, so phoning and phonology. Phonology. Phoning, phonology, phonological. That's very much like the photograph example. Can you give us another one? Psycho, psychology. Psychological. Very good. So psycho, that's a liu for somebody who's crazy. And I, we probably have that towards the front of our mind right now with the recent events in the US. A psycho, somebody who's crazy. So psycho, psychology, psychological. Um, do you have one more? I'm not sure the first column is correct, but the second is column and column, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, philosophy mm -hmm. and philosophical. Mm -hmm. Okay, philosophy, philosophical. We don't really have one. I can't think of one for column one, but for two and three, that's fine. Okay, do we have an another example here? Calligraph. Calligraphy, no? We don't have calligraph. No. No. Okay. But your second, for the second column, I think your example is okay. Uh, and calligraphic. Um, Cal calligraphy for column two, calligraphic for column three. Calligraphic is not that common, but it's possible. So calligraphy, calligraphic. Do you have a better example that has a column one example? Mm, 
Autonomy. 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 Uh huh. Autonomic. 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 That's also not so common. Autonomous. 通常就是这个形容词 Autonomy. Autonomous. 两个都一样的重音 Autonomy. Autonomous. Yeah. I'll give you a couple that I have from other years. So, medicate or medicine. 第二个 medicinal. 形容词 and medication. Medicate or medicine, medicinal, medication. Another example: patron, paternal, paternalistic. Now, 一到满后面呢 President, preside or preside rather, presidential. President, preside, presidential. How about simple, simplistic, simplification? Those are my examples. Anybody have a good example you want to contribute? Yeah. Socialize for the third one. Stresses stresses on the first syllable. The first two are fine. Socialization. There we go. Okay, that's good.、Um, let's get through the next one quickly. Part D.、Um, To save time, I'm just going to give you a list. Why don't you just check off? Because we're going to come up with mostly the same things for this one, and I'll just tell you what I have here. And these are worth noting down. Okay.、Um, first of all, the the word itself, and then strong form, weak form, example. The words I have, everybody ready? Of, O F. Strong form is of, weak form v. An example of weak form? One of these. One of, one of, one of. All right. In strong form, n. A hole in one. A hole in one, n. R A R, A R E rather. So strong form r, weak form er. And what are you doing? What are, what are you doing? What are you doing? And is, strong form is, weak form us or z, like、um, what is he up to? What is he up to? What is he up to? Or, er, this or that, this or that, this or that, with a schwa, a rhoticized schwa. From, from, he's from here. He's from, from. Instead of he's from here, he's from here, from. I'll. O is the weak form. I'll go first. I'll go first. I'll go first. On, un or n. It's on top of the book. It's on top of the book. We're, were, we're done. No, no, not yet. Actually, no. <laughs> okay, we're done. Don't take it too seriously here. Could is the full form, the strong form. Could. He could try. He could try. He could could could. He could try. So those are mine.、Um, I want to keep going just to do a few more before break. The next one is two examples of each of the following kinds of assimilations. One of the examples involving a change within a word. The other involving a change across word boundaries. This idea of Changes happening across word boundaries is an important one in phonetics and phonology. So keep that that phrase in mind. Across word bound boundaries. We also 跨字的规则跟字内的规则不一样，有时候所以那个要那个区别要注意 In each case, show the words in ortho orthography. Just means spelling. Orthography is just spelling. 一般的拼字，一般的那书写的英文 And in a narrow phonetic transcription, as in the examples, even if you yourself do not say assimilations of the kind illustrated, make up plausible. Plausible means 有说服力的，是可以想象的出来的，觉得合理的。That's plausible, believable. Examples we have heard, all the examples given we meaning the authors at the time it was probably just Peter Latifoged. So input in the example, we go from. Uh, an alveolar consonant to a bilabial input, input, and in British English it's some poles, some poles, some poles in British English, some some poles. This, but I don't say it that way in American because I'm from a city called Saint Paul, 
And nobody says Saint Paul. We say Saint Paul. We don't have such a language. Saint Paul. 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 All right. Um, next reader. Um, I have an uh, inbox for the first one. How do you spell it? I N box. It's uh, it's kind of term in email that. The oh, inbox. Inbox. And I was trying to think of 用盒子装起来 inbox, but put it in the box. Inbox. Okay, that could That's be fine. the second. I didn't even think of that, but you're right. I, <laughs> I use one talking. look. Okay. So the That's words fine. kind of inbox. weird. It's in my inbox. That's fine. Okay. Inbox. Inbox. It's in my inbox. Yeah. That's okay. And. And the second one is can buy. Can um, I can buy. I can buy it something. I can buy it. Yeah. yeah. That's okay. Yeah. That's good. And how about the next one? Um, so we're going from an alveolar to a dental. I have eighteen. Eighteenth. Eighteenth. Okay. And the second one is when they. When they. That's fine. Everybody gets the idea. Why don't you just finish it up so we can get through this? Um, a change from an alveolar consonant to a velar consonant. This is very very common. Just about any n, and this can go in your notes. If there's an n in spelling, but there's no c or k after it, 后面没有 c 也没有 k， 那个 n 基本上就是 n， 不是 in， 是舌尖的 n in。嗯 ，All right. But if there is a c or a k after it, it is usually ing. For example, s i n k is not sink; it's sink. And synchronous 那个就是 in. So in the spelling, if you see n plus c and plus k, you can use one look to find many words like that. They will usually be alveolar nasal. Examples. Um, the first one I have bank. Bank is fine. And second one is in game. In game. Yeah, like in a ball game or something. In game, usually we'd say in a game or in a, in the game, but it's okay Phon phonetically. It's fine. In game. It's an in in game decision. Maybe I don't know. So in game is good enough. It, it works. How about the last one here? A change from a voiceless consonant to a voiced consonant, and this one is easy with uh, T's. Go ahead. Um, I have water and batter. Water and batter. Yes. Um, one of them we need to qua zi. Oh, oh, sorry. So maybe. It is. Oh yeah. It is. It isn't. It is. I think it's a qua zi. The T 会变成 tap. Is that right? Yeah. It is. It isn't. And then we have. Uh, he's giving you two different ways of representing it, either with a D or with a tap. And because we're concentrating on American English, don't use the D; use the tap. Brits often can't tell the difference, but Americans can. They may not have phonetic training, but they'll think it's weird if you lengthen the D.、Um, I think we need a break. Let's take a break here and then finish after break. Okay. The next exercise. Is part F. You just need to give five more examples of assimilation, and we'll have two readers give their answers. Choose examples as different as possible from any that have been given before. They just want you to、uh, think more,、uh, think further, and not just take what's given to you. Our brains are really, really lazy. Our system two brain, as described in、uh, Thinking Fast and Slow. We, as soon as we see something difficult, we resist it. So he's trying to push you to get over that resistance and think of other things that haven't been mentioned yet. So our next reader, please. Okay.、Uh, the first rule,、uh, the first example I have is、uh, the epenthesis、uh, in chapter three. Yeah. And、uh, for example, the word some something,、mm -hmm. uh, and. A voiceless stop will be added to the word、uh, between a nasal and a voiceless fricative. Very good. That is an example of assimilation. We've got something happening there because a sound is becoming more like another sound, and in this case, it's wu zhong sheng yao. We didn't have that stop there at all. All right, another one. And、uh, the second example is uh, uh, approximants after voiceless stop like、uh, patuk. Uh, will be partially voiceless, like please. Okay, that's fine. That's another kind of assimilation. Good. Let's go to our next reader. I'll just quickly give you some that I have. 
I have the plurals rule that we've talked about and that I've just given you a new article on. So books, but words. The final S is subject to rules of assimilation. If the final sound is voiceless, we say s. If it's voiced, we say z. So books, but words. But bushes is not an example of assimilation as much as a, a dissimilation. It's e hua. Because, for example, let's say kiss. If we want to make it plural, kiss is what? Nigga s is wu sheng. So if we go kiss, we can't hear that final s at all. So we put in a vowel. That vowel is different from the s. That's a kind of e hua, dissimilation. That's a kind of dissimilation. So that's why I didn't put that one in there. And we have the same, same thing for the ED, past tense marking. Look, t, k is voiceless. The ED is t, it's voiceless. But rained, xia yu. Because of the N, rained. And um, a lot of places where we have a final T in the first word, and then the following word starts with a consonant. The T will turn into a glottal stop, plus probably the consonant will also assimilate. So, hit, bob, hit. The T becomes a glottal stop. That itself is not assimilation, but we often say hip bob, hip. hip, hip bob. That's assimilation. Or hit, kate, hit, hit. 可能会变成一个 Or hit, guy. Or hit, vern. Hit vern. 可能会有点 F 在后面. Hit vern. So those are examples of assimilation. This only happens with T. 那个 P 跟 K 比较不会这样子. T 就是会有很多变化. So those are the examples that I gave. And let's go on to um, part G. Indicate the stress and intonation patterns that might occur in the situations described for the following utterances. Draw curves indicative of the pitch rather than using Toby symbols. So you can see that he himself tends to avoid using Toby. Toby is useful. It is used a lot. But like I said, I'm, I'm just not pleased with the way it's presented in this text. So here, we're just drawing lines, and that's more intuitive. You don't have to learn a lot of rules. I'm just going to give these to you directly. So. Here we're being polite and we're trying to sound nice. So we're not going to say, can you pass me that book? We're not going to do that. It's, can you pass me that book? We're going to go up. Putting it as a question is a more polite way of doing it. It's not a command. It's giving you a choice. 你可以把那本书递给我吗? 递给我 is pass, by the way. 递给我. And we have that, that habit when we're eating that you don't usually do, at least traditionally, for Chinese food. Can you please pass me the potatoes? So, can you pass me that book? Can you? You can you go, you can you go. Can you pass? Can you pass me that book? I'm not going to draw it, draw it. I think that you should be able to do that yourself. And the next one is. The daughter didn't come home last night, or she came home very, very late, and the father is upset. So what is he going to say? Where were you last night? Where were you last night? Where, yeah, and gao were has the tonic. Where were you last night? Draw that out. Where were you last night? Or another way would be, where were you last night? Where were you last night? Okay. Where were you last night? But where were you last night is more unmarked. Three, this is a polite question again. Must it be? Printed. Remember that Juan de When we're asking a question, we have an upward intonation. The word with the tonic stress will get a, a pivotal shape. So, um, must it 
be? Must it be printed? Must it be printed? Must it be printed? That's a question that you might ask your teachers. 一定要印出来吗 Must it be printed? 也可以是，是不是要用手写，用楷书写出来 ？Must it be printed or can I use cursive writing? 可是现在 cursive writing 英文的行书现在很少用，不太有人用。I had a student who handed in all of his most of his assignments in careful cursive writing. 我我看得很辛苦 ，because we just don't use cursive writing anymore. And a lot of people are saying 小学已经不用教这个东西了，英文的行书几乎是不用的 ，except for signing your name. And maybe not everybody uses it for signing their name. So must it be printed? 可以是印出来，也可以是用楷书，用那个 manuscript writing 来写那个比较方的一个字母一个字母的那个写法。And then number four. This is an excited kind of tone of voice. Excitedly to a friend. Who is the one in the corner? Who is the one in the corner? Who? Is the one in the core? Tonic stress, nerve. Who is the one in the corner? Everybody hear it clearly. It's hard to hear it clearly when we say it fast, but if you get it when we're saying it slow, then you know what to listen for when we're saying it fast. So, who is the one in the corner? Harder to get, right? Who is the one in the corner? Who is the one in the corner? So, one more time. Can you pass me that book? 转弯的地方 Can you pass me? Can you pass me that book? Can you pass me that book? Where were you last night? Or where were you last night? 都可以 Where were you last night? Where were you last night? Three. Must it? Be printed, must it be printed? Can you all hear it? Okay. 听得出来吗？中音跟那个线怎么画吗 ？Four. Who is the one in the corner? Excited. Who is the one in the corner? Da 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 da. 这是什么节奏 ？Alex isn't here today. 这是什么节奏 ？You guys, huh? Da 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 da. Anapestic, yeah. Not antipasto. When is it Chen Cai? Okay. Very quickly for those of you who were not in my Dai Yingwen or similar class, the most common rhythm in English is da 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 da. Put this in your notes. You may not get this in another class ever, but you need this. Why? When she be a learn, 应该都知道这个东西 This is called. Very good. I am. I am is the noun. We usually use. The adjective form iambic. Everybody, iambic. iambic. Former friend, freshman English students, do you remember this stuff? You didn't in Xiang ma. All right. If we reverse it, we get da 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 da. And I mentioned in the previous class that this is, or more than previous, a couple classes ago, that this is common in Beijing Mandarin, like ge bo luo bo, right? This is called trochaic. I did need a different pen. Hang on. That's better. Trochaic. Trochaic. Da 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 da. Okay. And then we have the most common of the three beat foot is da 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 da. That's called. And that's because it's it, it gets its name from finger. A finger. The the joints of a finger are long, short, short, long, short, short. We call that dactylic. Da, 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 da. There once was a man. Da, 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 da. Okay, that's dactylic, and the reverse of that is da 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 da. da. This is 骑马的节奏 This one is what you were saying. This is the anapestic thing. Anapestic. Everybody, put these in there in your notes. Memorize these. You really need these for literature class. Even if your teacher hasn't mentioned them, this is very very basic English prosody. 诗分析诗的时候是一定要用到的 Everybody, iambic. 
Trochaic. Trochaic. Dactylic. Dactylic. Anapestic. Anapestic. Not, don't say anapastic. Anapestic. Mm -hmm. Okay, any questions? Keep these in mind. These are really important and we can use these when we are talking about prosody in phonetics and phonology. These are very useful terms, both in literature and in phonetics and phonology. Okay. Um, so, who is the one in the corner? What is this? Who is the one in the corner? What do you hear? Which one? Who is the one in the corner? Of course I'm making it more obvious. Which one is it? Dactylic. This is a dactylic. Is he here? Is he here? What's that? It's anapestic. Da da da. Da da da. Da da da. Is he here? Okay, and uh, in English poetry, probably about 60% of classical English poetry, poetry that's written according to the rules, will be iambic. 百分之六十以上 is iambic. 再来是trochaic, then dactylic, anapestic, three sha. Okay, these are useful terms when you want to describe stress patterns. The next one is, to make sure I have the right book here, fill in plus and minus signs so as to indicate which syllables in the table below have tonic accents which have stress and which have full vowels. You may find it useful to refer back to table 5.4. Who is our next reader? We're ready? Oh, Alice, do you have that ready? Go. Um, uh, computation for tonic accent, uh, minus, minus, plus, minus. Everybody got that? Good. Uh, compute, uh, or, or stress, uh, plus, minus, plus, minus. Okay, computation, good. And full vowel? Minus, plus, plus, minus. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. Listen carefully, everybody. Computation. Computation. Full vowel. Which syllables have a full vowel? A full vowel does not have to be in a stressed syllable. It may be shorter in an unstressed syllable, but it is still a full vowel. So what do we have? What's our pattern here with pluses and minuses? Computation. Plus. Plus. Plus, minus. That's our pattern. Com. We don't say com. In American, remember that an O is off an A. Ah. So, com. We don't say computation. It's not com. Computation. It's computation. All right, next one. Compute. Go ahead. Uh, tonic accent. Minus. Tonic. Tonic, tonic accent. Tonic yeah, accent. Accent's okay. Go ahead. Mm. Minus plus. Minus plus. Stress? Minus plus. Good. Full vowel. Mm. Be careful. Plus. Plus, mm -hmm. or, or minus plus. <laughs> Confusing. So, computation, but compute. And computation, they get calm, you may stress. The calm and computation, is it stressed? Yes, it is. It's got one of the stresses. And that accounts for why it has a full vowel. That's one way you can explain it. Compu. But pu is also stressed. And that's because you, be reduced. It does reduce but it is not that easy for it to be reduced, okay? And we'll find that out uh, in chapter four. And the next one, go ahead, Alice. Minus, minus, oh, plus. Oh, read the word first. Okay, inclination. Mm -hmm. Minus, minus, plus, minus. All right, inclination, that's the tonic, good. And plus, stress? Uh, plus, minus, plus, minus. Inclination, two stresses, and full vowel. Minus, minus, plus, minus. Inclination, very Oh, no. Same pattern is with computation, isn't it? So make sure you're not fooled by that. Just because it doesn't have the main or tonic stress doesn't mean that it is necessarily um, a schwa. Again? Mm -hmm. Incline. Oh, we're not done with inclination. Oh. Do that again. Uh, plus, minus, plus, minus. Inclination. In, full vowel, plus, schwa. Ne, full vowel, shen, schwa. You could say inclination, but that's very... Uh, inclination is more common. The last one, the verb, incline. Minus plus. Mm -hmm. Tonic. Oh. Just make sure that we're following clearly. Huh? Tonic Incline. accent. Oh. Minus plus. Mm -hmm. Say it, please. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank Tonic you. accent. Thank you. Minus plus. Mm -hmm. And stress. 
minus plus. Okay. Full vowel minus plus. Incline. Oh no, so plus plus. Mm. As soon as you see me hesitate there, right? So incline, is that a is that a full vowel or a schwa? Incline. The first syllable is a schwa or a full vowel? It's a full vowel, incline. Incline sounds odd. I don't think I say that. I, I say I don't think it's, be, it's because I often say things that I don't think I say. So sometimes I will say, I don't, I don't think I say that, but then you hear me say it, that happens. Or I discover that myself that I'm saying it. But incline, as far as I know, is a full vowel plus a full vowel. Let's go on to number, uh, part I. Make a segmental transcription and also show the tone tier with Toby transcription of the following utterances for which the pitch curves have been drawn in the chapter. You didn't have to do Toby because I said we're not doing Toby. Uh, you can do that yourself. If you did it, that's fine. Uh, maybe I'll give you extra credit, but you don't need the Toby. So I'm just going to read it aloud due to time constraints. I don't want to put the whole thing on the board. Um, and this is not mainly about segments anyway. So I hope your IPA is in good order. We know the new mayor. We know the new mayor. You can just use lines here. You don't have to use Toby. We know the new mayor. We know the new mayor. So no is the end of the first intonational group, the first thought group. Pause. The new is not really stressed. Mayor gets the tonic stress of the whole sentence. We know, pause, the new mayor. We don't stress new because it seems to be background information, assumed shared information. The next one. Um, okay, and a lion is a mammal is the usual way to say it. A lion is a mammal. But if you are having a discussion where you already are thinking a lot about lions and somebody said, well, I think that a lion is an amphibian. That's pretty weird. You'd say, a lion is a mammal. What's wrong with you? A lion is a mammal in that case. I think that's what they want for a lion is a mammal. Con contrastive stress here. A lion, lion can gao. But the tonic stress is on mammal. A lion is a mammal. A lion is a mammal. Five, a lion is a mammal. A lion is a mammal. Continuation rise. A lion is a mammal. A lion is a mammal. Okay, we're going to have a look at your lines when we check your work. I hope you're using a different colored pen to mark your work. Number seven is, will you mail me my money? Nothing is in bold here, so this is unmarked. So we're using just the default, default stress here. Will you mail me my money? Will you mail me my money? 转弯的地方, tonic stress is on ma, and it's got a rising intonation. Will you mail me my money? Okay. And number eight from the text. When will you mail me my money? When will you mail me my... This is some kind of rhythm. When will you mail me my money? This is another one. Dactylic again, right? Dactylic. When will you mail me my money? Ma will be more low. It's got the tonic stress. But because the dialogue is slowly dropping down, your tone is going to drop. So when will you mail me my money? These three tones may not be too far apart. But the tonic stress is still on money. It's the last one. Then the dialogue has a tonic stress. Right. When will you mail me my money? Number 10, we knew Anna, eh, 转弯的地方是 eh, we knew Anna, Mary, Lenny, and Lenny, and Nora. This is 
the usual way to do it. There's another one, but another way to do it, but I'll do this one again. We knew Anna, Mary, Lenny, and Nora. Can everybody draw that accurately with lines? We knew Anna, Mary, Lenny, and Nora. Anna, Mary, Lenny, and Nora. So that's the way you should mark this one. Or you could do, we knew Anna, Mary, Lenny. 也可以,两个高频也可以,这是另外一个, this is a variation. We knew Anna, Mary, Lenny, and Nora. Okay? Performance exercises, finally. Um, whose turn? Okay. Pronounce the following phrases exactly as they have been transcribed with all the assimilations and elisions. Each is uh, an actual utterance. Each is a record of an actual utterance that he heard. So how do you say the first one? Look at the IPA, look at the transcription. What are you doing? Oh, what are you doing? That's better. Almost. Not quite, but it's very close. All right. What you doing? What are you doing? Everyone, what you doing? What you doing? And we say that a lot. So if we're just walking by a friend and making idle conversation. What you doing? What you doing? It's All right, the next one. I can um, quiet. Okay, this is actually in British, so I'm giving you an American version. But in American, it's I can, I can, I can inquire. I can, I can inquire. I can inquire. Actually, they have a K here. I can inquire. I can inquire. I usually put a glottal stop there. I can inquire. I can inquire. I have more, I have it even more reduced. I can, but here it's I can inquire. I can inquire. I can inquire. Everybody try it? In British it would be I can inquire. Quire. Hold me in the army. I can inquire. Everyone? American? I can inquire. Watch the ng. The next one, everybody try it. Just everybody shout it out. This one's fun. People usually laugh when they hear this one. Okay, listen. Listen again carefully. You laugh too, okay? Do you think you would understand it? Probably not. So this is a really great example if you want to test somebody and have fun about how we assimilate in English and reduce. So listen again. Don't repeat. Just listen a few times. Yeah. And why can we, we reduce it so much? Because a T can turn into a, a final T can turn into a glottal stop very easily. So there's no T there, there's just glottal stops. Listen again. And it's not, it's not marked, it's not considered low class speech. It's just very common. Everyone, T yet, listen. T yet, T yet, T yet. Sounds like a times I jelled later. Okay, T yet. Okay, now try repeating. T yet. There's a nice sharp glottal stop at the end. Good. All right, the next one, everybody try. I don't believe him. I don't believe him. Now, I keep telling you to stop at stops. And if you read this more carefully, it would be I don't believe him. Now, why can we reduce this? Because extremely, extremely high frequency words can be reduced. Like, I don't know. If you say, I don't know, I will correct you, but native speakers will say, I don't know, I don't know. 因为 don't 是非常常用的, 就是它的那个频率非常高, 那种字就会有reduction, 其他的不会. So don't conclude that you can forget about stopping at stops. You need to stop at stops. But for very, very high frequency words and phrases, we will reduce. So this one is, I don't believe in, everyone? I don't, there's, even, there's an M there. I don't believe him. All right, the next one, we ought to have come. We ought to have come. Everyone, we ought to have come. Okay. 
And then let's just read the words. We're not going to do B. Let's just do uh, read the words in C. Try the first one, everyone. I'm sorry, isn't it sh again? Once more. Can you make it smoother? Okay, this sort of reminds me of Georgian because they have so many consonants in a row. You just read one after another. I'll give you examples some other time. I'm not really prepared right now. And sometimes, even when there's, an, there's a vowel in between, they get rid of the vowel. They get rid of the vowel. So, um, even when they have vowels to help them, I'll give you examples some other time if you're interested. I'm not very smooth myself. Let's try the next one. Ankli thunt. Okay. Zio ego jongi. Try it again. Ankli thunt. All right. Let's try the next one. Sve e. Ma. There's a secondary stress there. Try it again. Sve e. Ma. Last one. Groipst brags. Once more. Very good. All right. And then. Uh, D, let's just read what they have. Do the first one. Again. Watch the stresses. Tipe, kike, tipe. Again. This is easier. Anyway, it's, it's CV, CV. That's much easier. Next one. Good. Again. Soy sai fao foi shao fao. Good, next one. Mo nang. That's a ngu. Try it again. Mo nang ngu ngu no ma. Good enough, next one. Wo oi lao ra. Okay, they're putting us. Is there a stress on that? All right, they're putting a stress with an ah sound if it's an American ah. Try it again. Wo oi la ra ro lo yo. All right, last one. Bub dig bed bed gib dead bed beb dud. That's a schwa. How cool. The reason I don't like these, I don't like made up data. I have fun with pronouncing difficult words in a real language, but for these made up things, I personally have trouble. We're done with the exercises. Please hand in your work. We'll collect them at the end of the class. Get them ready to hand in. Put the number wrong in the upper right hand corner of page one. Make sure your pages are either stapled together or you've got your name on each page. All right, so we are officially now finishing up chapter five. We're going back to chapter four. We do have a little time left. So let's pick up where we left off. Okay, so that means we're at 92. New topic, diphthongs, go ahead. Tina, diphthongs. Dif, not dif, dif. Dif. Diphthongs. Diphthongs. Right. We will now consider. Not con. Everybody watch this. This is a common word. We don't say con. Consider. Everyone consider. consider. Good. We will now consider the mm -hmm. diff. Consider. Not consider. 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 That's a little better. Consider. Consider. Right. The difference. Diff. Diff. Uh -huh. Difference. Shown in figure 4.2. Okay, I'm going to take some time on pronunciation again. So, first of all, d is not d, consider is also i, not e. And I want you to review, 
那个诗的文章第三，我要你复习，因为这个是专门讲 e 跟 i 怎么区别。Everybody who's having trouble with e and i, look at number three， 诗的第三篇就是专专门针对 e 跟 i 的差别。第二个问题是 watch my mouth, everyone. Shown, it's not shown, it's shown. 有纯化 there's labelization, but don't round too much. It's not shown, it's shown. Okay. Shown. You have too much show. It's shown. Shown. Yeah. Make your lips a little more spread. 就分的比较圆 Shown. That's better. Not shown. Shown. Okay. That's pretty good. Okay. Go on. Each of each each. 这还是一跟一，所以你真的是要看那个第三篇 Each of each of these sounds. These bad words. Each of these sounds. Each of these sounds. Involve a change in ah, not change. Change. Everybody. Change. Let's review. Change. Change. Good. And also these. Don't say this. Everyone, these. these. All right. Let's practice this phrase. Each of these sounds. Everyone. Each of these sounds. Not this. These. these. Yeah. Each of these sounds. Each of these sounds. Good. Involves a, change. involves a change. Good, Tina. Try it again. Each. Each of these sounds involves a change. Involves. Involves a change. No. Try um, to make an A sound. A change. No. Chen. No. No. Somebody help, please. Annie, can you help? Annie. Annie. Chen. Okay. Chen. Change. Everyone, change. Change. If there's one word I'd like you to change, it's the word change. Name and change. So, 两个一定要学会 Okay. Everyone, name. Name. Good. Perfect. Change. Change. Don't say change. It's not change. It's change. Change. One more time, Tina. Change. You're still saying change. 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 嗯嗯，后面不要 n n 以后不要念 change. Change. That's better. Change. Change. That's better. Okay. Involved a change. 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 That's what happens with habit. Okay, so that needs practice. Go on. A change in a change. Change. There you in, go. Okay. In quality within okay. one vowel. All right. Everybody got it. So with a diphthong, we have a change in quality with one vowel. So 同一个母音，我们定位为一个母音。It occurs in the same syllable. So 一个同一个音节内。So if we say radio, is dio a diphthong? Radio, 那个 dio is that a diphthong? No, because They occur in two different syllables, but rei nega e that is a diphthong. It's in the same syllable, so that's a really important thing to know. That's part of the definition. 同一个音节里面有变化，从一个母音到另外一个母音。There's a change from one vowel to another within the same syllable, and we consider it as a single vowel. Go on. As a ma matter of convenience, they can be described as move movements. From one vowel to another. To another. To a. To another. Not to. To a. To another. Okay. All right. So I'll continue in English. The first part of the diphthong is usually more prominent than the last. We call that what kind of diphthong? Falling diphthong. 前面比较长，比较明显，比较显著。像 I， 那个 E 占的成分比较少。I is longer. It's more prominent. So, 从一个比较显著的到一个一一点点而已，那个叫 falling， 因为它从一个很伟大的、很高的地方降下来。I, but for you, that is called a rising diphthong. 因为一一点点，重点都是在 u u 比较显显著 ，so that's called a rising diphthong. 从比较小、比较短的，不是那么显著的，它上升到一个比较长、比较显著的那个叫 rising diphthong. That's the only one that does that. Is you? That's the only rising diphthong in English. In fact, the last part is often so brief and transitory that it is difficult to determine its exact quality. 因为后面那个部分很短暂，就是很难去定位到底那个母音的重点在哪里，因为它很短。
不大清楚。Furthermore, diphthongs often do not begin and end with any of the sounds that occur in simple vowels. We already know that. 就是刷母音，啊，可以考试，应该是有考到或者会考到。它的起点，它的终点，都没有哪一个起点跟终点跟哪一个单元音是同一个地方。So there is no diphthong that has either that has a regular monophthong for either the beginning or the end. Okay.、Um, The next paragraph: For maximum clarity, the difference in the prominence of the two vowel qualities of a diphthong can be indicated by writing the non-syllabic diacritic symbol under the less prominent portion, as in i. 那个 i 下面你有没有看到一个新的符号？有个好像一座山的一个形状 ，right? That shows 后面的比较短，比较不显著。You don't normally need to mark it, but if you want to, so the reader knows that. Ah, is 比较显著的部分。那个 is 下面可以加那个符号。This makes explicit the distinction between a two-syllable vowel sequence, not it, not it, and a single-syllable vowel. Oh, and 他是西部人。I don't say not it. 我用西部腔好了。Okay, 很委屈。Alright, not it, not it. Not it. That's with a Western U.S. accent, which is so weird for me. And a single-syllable vowel sequence, night, night. Now the it is much lower than the second part of I in night. 那个比较接近 e, night. 对我来说比较高 He's just making a comparison. It doesn't go across two syllables. It does not quad it. So it does not cross a syllable boundary. A diphthong is within the same syllable. Night, not night, night, night. It is also common among phoneticians.、So、you can see that. 那是后后来那个一个西部人家的一个部分。原来的以前的版本没有这一句。It is also common among phoneticians to use another method to mark diphthongs with the monosyllabic element printed as a superscript letter. 所以呃、oh, ，the non-syllabic 抱抱歉，不是 monosyllabic. Non-syllabic. 它没有。造成另外一个没有，没有造成另外一个音节的那个部分，就是 i。另外一个写法是一个 superscript 小写的 i。That lets us know that this is what kind of diphthong again? What kind? It's a falling diphthong, but it's a little confusing because it goes higher in the writing, right? Don't let that confuse you. These these are just 比喻 rising, falling， 只是比喻而已。But this one is a falling diphthong because the i part is less prominent.、Mm. We're going to have to stop there. That was the bell. We're going to be rushing a lot. We're going to try to finish the chapter on Wednesday. And、um, let me think. There's other things we needed to do. You need to、um, ding zheng your tests for chapter three by Saturday. You have part back. You have part two back. We'll give you the rest of the test back on Wednesday. It needs to be corrected and handed in on Saturday. The nineteenth, we'll go over the test in class, and we'll start on an IPA transcription of Mandarin Chinese. Remember to bring the handout, the two pages from Li Wenzhao 老师的那篇文章 and then we'll try to finish Chapter Four. That's the plan for Wednesday, and we'll see you then.